Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you are listening to this wonderful message. Welcome again. Today we are here to study at the feet of Christ, to study as the prompting of the Holy Spirit, the word that feeds the spirit man. The word of God is the food of the spirit. Okay. Today we have a new topic we're going to be discussing for a short while. So sit tight and if you get your Bible, open your Bible as well as we go through and study. Today we have a new topic which says, on whose timeline are you living on? On whose timeline are you living on? Okay, and before that, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for yet another opportunity that you have given us to learn and to study. We pray for understanding of thy word, spirit of the living God, come and enlighten our minds, come and teach us, help us to know what you expect us to know. Take all the glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, on whose timeline are you living on? And we're going to be reading just two Bible passages. Two Bible passages, John 3, verse 3, and First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Uh, let's take that First Peter first. Let's read John 3, 3. 1 Peter 1, verse 23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It's talking about being born again as a seed. As a seed. The seed has been planted in the hearts of every human who has confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. And this is not a corruptible seed. This seed is there to bear, to germinate. This is a seed of God, through the word of God. Now, when we are talking about time, we are all creatures of time. We are living in time. God has put us from eternity into time. So that makes us creatures of time. So every one of us, we are living in time. We all have time. For instance, if you are walking and you sign an agreement with your company or your organization. You said you're going to work for them every working days for, let's say, four hours or six hours. Now, within that time frame that you agree, that company owns you because this is the time you signed for them. That six or four hours is the time they have with you. So what it means is that Every four hours of that day or every six hours of that day, your company tells you what to do. Your company instructs you, gives you assignments. This is what we want you to do, not what you want to do. Because they own you within those time limits. Because that is why they are paying you at the end of the week or at the end of the month. So that time is what, just like people who are in prison, and the judge said, they're giving them like six months. So that six months, the government owns them. They say, hi, you're going to go to do your time for six months in prison. You are being owned and controlled. So in that six months, government said, hey, we don't want you to be roaming around the streets. We want you confined in a place called prison. And we want you to do exercise every one hour of the day. We want you to do this manual level wants you to do that, wants you to do this, because they own you within those six months. The same goes on with the way you work. They own you to tell you what to do. You can come to office in the morning and say, hey, I feel like playing music. And it's under company time. That might get you fired. Because you don't do what you want to do. You do what that company wants you to do as long as it's under the company's time. So when we are talking about whose timeline are you living on? Every human being, we are living in time. So 
so the question now is are you living on your time or somebody else's time that is the very question we need to think about whose time are you living in is this your time you're living or is it a borrowed time you're living in or somebody else's time now when we confess jesus as our lord and savior what we are actually doing is that we are giving up our time to him and taking over his time because the bible says all sinners that the the reward for sin is death the reward for all sin is death so instead of us getting the reward for what we deserve god says okay you don't have to die for those sins i have sent my son to die on your behalf so there is a substitution of time in here now what it means is that instead of you going to prison for six months and this time around is for eternity i'm going to take that time you have and put it on my son and take my son's time and put it in you what it means is that you are now living on a different timeline now the life of jesus is what you are now living on because god no longer sees us as sinners the moment we confess jesus as our lord and savior we are changed we, we are new we are being born in a new just like you've been born into a country and you become a citizen of that country now in this way we are now living in jesus timeline no longer our timeline in order to walk and fulfill the promises of god on earth now god have a lot of blessings and promises for his children now for you to be part of that children god cannot behold iniquity he cannot so in order to bring man closer to him he had to see them through christ because christ has not sin so he nailed each and every one of our sins on the cross and now we are living the life of christ he said christ in you christ in you so the spirit of christ is what the time of christ is what we are living on he owns us he owns all the timing so what it means is that everything we do in this time is what he wants not what we want because it is his time unless you are not truly born again then you can say ah you're living by impulse you're living by your feelings you feel like drinking you drink you feel like smoking you smoke because it's your time some people say this is here this is their life nobody tells them what to do they are right because they are still living on their time within their time frame so within those times they feel like they want to fornicate they go ahead and do it whatever that pleases the flesh that's what they live by because this is their time frame but when you decided to substitute that time and give it up in order to accept a new timeline which is the life of christ in you you no longer do what pleases you you do what pleases your master he tells you pray every day you pray he tells you live holy you live holy now this is for your own good whatever the bible is telling us to do to live incorruptible and to live a life that is pleasing to god it is for our own good praise the lord it is for our own good it's just like a manufacturer who manufacture the product let's say a phone and he knows this phone could have box in it and in any way in other ways for this phone not to have box and not to malfunction there are guides there are rules this phone cannot play such content this phone cannot have such app on it this phone cannot have this this phone cannot have that you cannot put this phone in the water and expect it to work um, uh, normally there are rules there are principles so the same way happens to every believers god have given us these rules these laws in our spirits to live by so if you are living the life of christ and you are abiding by his rules 
it is also for your own good. Because he have weighed this earth and find out that this earth is full of mischiefs and evils. And in other way for you to live and walk through this earth and survive it is by obeying what he tells you to do. It's for your own good. It's for your own good. A smoker who smoke for all his life, maybe 20 years, 30 years, is causing damage to his or her body. Every sin is a risk people take. Every sin. You're not sinning or avoiding to sin because you want to please him only or because he benefits from it. It's for your own good. If you don't drink, if you don't smoke, if you don't, if you don't steal, it's for your own good. It gives you a good reputation. Hallelujah. So this life we're living, he has put a different life in us, a different timeline we're supposed to walk in so that we can represent him well here on earth. Praise the Lord. Now, there is a kingdom, there is a place we are expecting. We are being born again. We are now a citizen of a different kingdom. Let's read that, John 3. John 3, verse 3. John 3, verse 3. Jesus answered, he was talking to Nicodemus, and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again. So if you're still living on your timeline, you are taking a risk. You are taking a big risk. People, things happen every day. Let me put it that way. Things happen every day. People who live on their own timeline, they cannot control the timing. They cannot control what happens around them. So he who has created you said, I have a way out for this. I have a way for you to live securely and live happily without fear. No matter what is going on around you, I have a plan. But you have to live by my own rules. Live in the timeline he has provided, which is in Christ Jesus. So if you're living outside Christ, you're living a risky and a terrible life. Why? Because anything can happen anytime. This is not to implant fear, but this is to show you that the, the, the direction the world is going at right now. Anything can happen. So if you're not insured, if your life is not guaranteed in Christ, I'm sorry because what awaits, what's about to unfold is, is not something anybody wants to see or to uh, to face alone. You can't walk it alone. You need a guide. And this is the manufacturer. This is the creator who has created you. He knows you. He knows me. So he said, I have a way out for you. I have a good hope. I have a good end for you. A good plan for you. All you have to do, live by my rules. What I tell you to do, please do. Praise the Lord. So it is important if you have not switched to a different lane, if you're still on your own lane, please, there is a better lane, which is in Christ Jesus. You need to switch to that lane. You need to live by his own time. Now, what happens when you live in the lane of Christ? It is no longer you that live, but Christ lives through you. You don't stress anymore. You don't worry anyway because this is not your life. You do all he asks you to do. You believe him. You trust him. You have faith in him. All you need has been provided. A lot of people try to do things by themselves. They want to, they want to get it financially. They want to get it health-wise. They want somebody to take care of their children. They, even when they are not there, they want this, they want that. It's so complicated. Alone or your own lane, you cannot do this alone. So you need somebody who has made it available for you. Now he says, seek ye first. Now this is the kingdom that he has given to man. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things. What he means is that switch lane to my own time frame. Because in this lane, I have provided all this thing within 
this kingdom, within this kingdom, when you live the life of Christ, every other thing has been provided. Because you are no longer living your life. You are living the life of someone who is seated at the right hand of God and he operates from heaven. So he does not depend on the economy of earth to enrich you, to bless you, to watch over you. No, he operates from a different realm. Now, that is the kingdom nobody will want to miss. So if you have not given your life to Christ, I beg you today, do so. Switch lane. Jesus loves you. Jesus cared for you. He said he stand at the door and knock. If any man, if any man, any man who hears him and opens unto him, he will come in. So he's knocking at the door of your heart today. Do not shut him out. Do not shut him out. He is knocking. Please open unto him. And then I assure you, there is going to be a turnaround in your life. Let me pray because of our time. Say, Father, I thank you for the one listening to me this morning. I pray, Lord, that you touch their heart. You enlighten their minds. If any of them have not switched lanes to your lane, Lord, I pray for your grace upon their life to switch and to trust you and to believe in you. Father, for this decision they are about to make this morning, I pray that you surprise them. That needs in their heart. Let it be soft. Let it be met in the name of Jesus. Do something, a remarkable thing in their life that they will know that it is only you that can do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I cover this once with the blood of Jesus. Every form of attack that is awaiting on their way, Lord, that it take care of them. As they switch lane today to live within your timeline, fight their battle, take care of their needs in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Be exalted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much for your time. I believe that this message will be a blessing to a lot and a lot of you. Please try and share this message to someone that might need it. God bless you. God bless you and remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.